What's up everyone? It's your friendly neighbor at Spider-Man here and I gotta say I can't see shit with these lights on. It's ridiculous. They should have done a better job with this, but uh yeah, so this is the non-spoiler review of uh Spider-Man No Way Home and nothing better than a good sponsorship from uh G Fuel. And uh, it actually tastes pretty good. You know. And uh I know I sent out a tweet and I stated that this will be the very best Spider-Man film that you'll ever see. Possibly the best Marvel film. You know what? Yeah. This is one of the best Marvel films you will ever fucking see. And when I stated that, of course, there are some people out there, like myself. Listen, look. Everybody knows that I am not a fan of Tom Holland's version of Spider-Man or the MCU characters. Or what John Watts has done with the character. But I am telling you that this film makes up for it. And this is a love letter. Because look, Into the Spider-Verse was a love letter to Spider-Man. This film is a love letter to all Spider-Man fans. Yeah, every Spider-Man fan. From the previous films to the new films. So that really helps out. So I am also going to do a spoiler review. So I'm just warning you as of right now that when I say spoiler, you don't want to be spoiled. You want to wait until the movie comes out because let me tell you that any time that I checked into my YouTube, look, I've read the script. I know what happens in the film, but I want to see things for myself. And I tried as best as I could to avoid spoilers and it was just everywhere. I mean, you go into YouTube and there's already footage of the film in there of the important parts of the film. And. Even Twitter, I just had to get the hell away from there because nobody, you know, the thing is that everybody's just spoiling everything and nobody's being really cool about it. And it's not cool because there's some people out there who legit, like, they want to go on social media and it's not fair that you have to avoid social media for days just so that you can avoid spoilers because people are just very disrespectful. Anyway, so I'm telling you guys, and there's not much I can say for non-spoiler. But also in the spoiler section, I am going to talk about as to why they did not release that third trailer. I did make a statement about it, but there's more to it than that. And you guys are going to be very surprised as to why they did not release that third trailer. Even though I've stated that releasing that third trailer was very vital. And for those of you who've seen the film, you know as to why. So I'm going to explain that. And all I have to say is that seriously, if you're a Spider-Man fan... Whether you love the MC version of Tom Holland's Spider-Man or not, this film is definitely worth watching. I mean, not just once, but over and over and over again. It is a really great fucking film. And I'm also going to talk about some of the things that I reported that was supposed to happen, but then changed, and I'm going to explain as to why that happened. And this isn't one of those fan support things. Like, this whole video is just for you guys. It's all in there for everybody, so you don't have to worry about that. But, I'm telling you, I cried. I legit cried more than once. And the audience reaction was absolutely fucking mind-blowing. It was fucking bonkers. Even though I already knew what was going to happen. Like, you know, knowing which characters are going to be in there, what was going to happen and everything. I was just still mind blown by just watching it because there's a total difference between what you read, you know, in a script and what you see on film. And I was blown away. This did not feel like a John Watts film, like at all. It was just a completely, totally different direction. It literally felt as if like Sam Raimi, Mark Webb and John Watts got all together and just all directed this film. That's how it felt. It was nothing like the two previous films. I mean, there were some things in there, like the corny dialogue and shit, that, you know, pretty much resembled a John Watts film. But other than that, you guys will not be disappointed. I swear to you, <laughs> I'm telling you, and oh, there goes the lights. Let's see if we can get it back on in here. Ah, there we go. So that's something new. <laughs> After a while, it just turns off by itself. 
anyway so there's really not much i could say from here as far as non-spoiler all i could say is that this is the best fucking i'm, I'm telling you for those of you who are gonna walk into this thinking fuck this this is a john watch film i don't like his directing i don't like the way the characters are going it's fucking not spider-man i'm telling you by the end of this film tom holland's version of spider-man becomes the spider-man that we all wanted him to become since the first film it really does pay off and i cannot wait to see what happens next although i kind of know <laughs> although things change all the time i'm telling you when i go into the spoiler section i'm going to explain a few things that were supposed to happen in the film but didn't based on my reports that i made and well i'm going to explain that in the spoiler section so right now if you don't want to be spoiled get the fuck out <laughs> and enjoy this film and then come back and rewatch. I'm also going to have the review of the script, which I did a little tease at the end of the review of the script that was only available for fan supporters, but I'm going to show you the full video as to what my review of the script was. And also, um, one of the cool things is that uh, AMC didn't have shit. <laughs> that fucking sucked. All they have is the NFTs. Uh, Regal at least had these cups, which is actually pretty cool. Um, it also comes with a bucket. Let me just get the bucket over here. And mind you, I am as blind as a, as a bat right now, so I don't know if you guys can actually see the whole thing. But it's actually really cool. But AMC did not do shit. They did not have any drinks. They did not have any popcorn buckets. No posters. Nothing. Fucking sucks. Go, go see it in Regal. Go see it in 4DX or, or ScreenX. You know, it's just... Avoid AMC at all costs because they didn't do jack shit, which is surprising. I mean, if you're into the whole NFT thing, which I think is fucking stupid. I heard about what it's about, but not interested in that. Okay, so spoilers, go away. Shoo, 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 shoo. Okay, spoiler time. I'm loving the red eyes. Actually, I can see a lot better with the red eyes than I did of the blue. So that's actually a comforting. Anyway, there is a lot to talk about uh, because prior to me signing an NDA, I talked about how in this film, Tom McGuire's Spider-Man was supposed to die. And let me tell you, that one scene, obviously I knew what was going to happen, but originally Tom McGuire's character Spider-Man was going to die and be an ultimate sacrifice to stop, you know, Tom Holland's Spider-Man from doing what, you know, eventually he did and he will end up regretting. You can't blame Tom Holland's version of Spider-Man because Green Goblin killed Aunt May and the one thing that really was cringe, and I really want to get into, into this now, is the whole with great power comes great responsibility uh, speech that came from not Uncle Ben, which for some fucking reason, Uncle Ben is just, again, left in the fucking dark. I mean, yeah, let's talk about it. <laughs> just talk about the really big thing that happened, is the fact that, yeah, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are in this fucking film. And I feel so bad for Andrew Garfield because he is the fucking werewolf. He was the werewolf the whole time. You guys have no I I'm so glad that this shit is out now because I signed an NDA and I know prior I made a lot of reports and I confirmed that Tom McGuire and Andrew Garfield are indeed in this film. But the amount of deceiving and lying that, oh my God, he's got a lot of explaining to do. Both Tom Holland and Andrew Garfield, because Tom McGuire, he just didn't say shit. I mean, he took a picture of a fan, and they asked him if he was in a new movie, and he kind of winked at him, and that was it, you know? We didn't hear shit from him. Anyway, back on point. Uncle Ben is pretty much mentioned in this film. You have Andrew Garfield's version of Uncle Ben, and you have Tom McGuire's version of Uncle Ben. Yo, what the fuck happened to Tom Holland's version of Uncle Ben? Like, he just didn't even mention, not a nod, nothing. It's really fucking annoying. It's like, you start thinking, is there a fucking Uncle Ben? Although we know there is. He did not acknowledge him once. And that pissed me off. Because if Aunt May would have said, just remember what your uncle said, with great power comes great responsibility, I would have accepted that. But no, it came directly from Aunt May. And... The thing is, is that the main reasons as to why Tom Holland's version of Spider-Man become, well, Tom Holland's version of Peter Parker becomes Spider-Man is because Uncle Ben is his main motivation. 
But yet still, they had the perfect opportunity to correct that and at least mention Uncle Ben. But, yeah, that didn't happen. Sadly. Anyway. So, originally, yes, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man was supposed to die. Which comes in Miles Morales, who comes from his universe... You know, um, that will take over the mantle of, of Spider-Man. But I guess they're doing something different. Because, look, Toby agreed to it. Okay? But as he got into it and everything... And like I said, there were several different death scenes that were shot for this film. Just to, you know, protect... You know, obviously they do that a lot. They, they shoot a lot of different character death scenes. Just to make sure that they protect any leaks. That, I mean, this is the... I'm telling you. The leaks that came out of this film was unbelievably crazy unbelievably insane every fucking thing that was rumored actually became true we had charlie fucking cox's daredevil in the fucking film we even had fucking tom hardy's version of venom in the fucking film which obviously you know that was a giveaway being that what happened with, uh, at the end of venom 2 but everybody was really conflicted with with two things going on that kingpin was coming back which we all found out in hawkeye that he actually did sorry if i spoil that one for you and also now we have Charlie Cox's Daredevil coming back. And you know, even though the scene was brief, the whole fucking theater like fucking exploded when he showed up on screen. And uh, I literally cried when I saw Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man come out. Uh, and Tom McGuire's Spider-Man when he came out. The whole fucking theater lost their shit. I mean, everybody knew that, I mean, this is the thing. Okay, let me get to the story about what happened with that third trailer. There was a thing between Kevin Feige and Amy Pascal where they wanted to actually have a hint or something. Oh, there goes the lights again. Let me just fix this for a second. Gotta get to red. Ah, there we go. Okay. So what Sony wanted to do was that they at least wanted a hint of like how they did in Ghostbusters last trailer where you know that they're in the film. But Kevin Feige has this thing to where, look, we all know the secret's out. Things are leaked. We gotta deny, deny, deny. But to just keep this secret and have everybody be like, are they really in the film? And just find out for yourself as you're watching the film. There's something beautiful about it that he felt that, okay, maybe fans should just see it for themselves. And you don't need Tom McGuire and Andrew Garfield in a trailer to sell tickets. So if the tickets sell really well, which obviously it broke the fucking internet then we don't need to include them in the next trailer. We don't need another trailer. It's already said and done. Let the fans experience it for themselves. But of course, Sony's like, well, you know, if we actually tease them in the trailer or show something, then that will guarantee more ticket sales. But it's like, you don't need it because everybody has an idea, especially with the classic villains being in the film, that it's quite a possibility that there are in this film. And let's go find out. So... I understand what Kevin is trying to say, and I understand Amy Pascal's side of the whole situation because it's like, it's not pleasure, it's business, and you know, and I'm telling you, I could only imagine if they actually had Andrew Garfield or, or and, and Tom McGuire in one of those trailers, which originally was supposed to come out in the first trailer, but they fought with them. They were actually fighting, they were in conflict with each other about actually releasing a trailer with them in it and kevin made a deal with amy and says listen if, if this thing works out we don't need another trailer we don't need i mean just let the audiences have that experience and you know i don't know if it worked or not but given okay i see the tickets did sell out a lot you know you didn't need those two characters in the trailers to you know sell tickets i mean People wanted to see this film regardless. And when the villains things leaked, goodness, they weren't even, they were trying to keep that one a secret too. Like they wanted to be like a very secret Spider-Man film. And let me tell you um, that this worked out because there was a lot of people in the audience are just like, holy fucking shit. They just not, they didn't do, just fucking do that. Are they really on screen? Like, I get it. I get what Kevin wanted to do. And you know what? Success in that area. But at the same time, business-wise, it would have been smarter to at least hint at them. Like, heavily hint at them. Not just the stupid, shitty teases that they had left and right. You know, with 
uh, how Tom Holland at one point was like, let me just introduce two special friends, and then all of a sudden you see Zendaya and, you know, uh, Jacob Battalon in there, and it's not Toby and Andrew. I get every now and then we're kind of teasing in there, and honestly, Andrew Garfield should win a fucking Oscar for his role as the fucking werewolf with keeping this shit a secret. He literally, like, I knew they were in the film, but if I didn't know, I would be fully convinced that he's not in this movie. That's how fucking good he was at hiding this shit. But you know, it's all about NDA, so you really can't get mad at him. You can't get mad at Toby, although he just kept fucking quiet. So that's the reason as to why there was no trailer, that, well, third and final trailer, or, or you could call it a second final trailer or whatever. And I don't expect them to have them, I mean, it's already too late. The movie fully comes out, you know, what, tomorrow? <laughs> um, and the whole situation is, is that, you know, the villains, the way they did everything with the villains was absolutely fucking perfect. I mean, my nostalgia senses were tingling, and this is as to why I compared this film to Cobra Kai. Because when you start watching Cobra Kai, it's like everything is perfect. You know, it all comes together. It's a good story, and just that feeling of nostalgia again. And I'm telling you, like, once everything starts to settle in, and the villains come in and everything, and you see them all together, and it's like a really big reunion... And of course, there were rumors that they were variants. They weren't exactly from the same Raimi and, and Mark Webb universe, but they actually are the same characters. I mean, I don't know where that fucking rumor came from, but I mean, ultimately, it was just so much fun to see all these villains. I mean, especially, you know, because of course, people are just like, well, why aren't they? Why isn't Rias I fans and, you know, Tom Hayden Church like doing any interviews or posters or whatever? I just didn't understand why they kept that a secret. Obviously, they were coming back. Obviously, it's the same actors. Here we go again with the lights. Lights out, buddy. <laughs> Sorry about that. This is going to happen a lot. Anyway, um, but like I said, this movie was absolutely fucking amazing. I am definitely going to see this movie like a bunch of fucking times. Like, I'm going to see in 40X. Uh, I'm going to see in Screen X for the first time. I've never done that before. And... I mean, this has been a long fucking journey. I came out of retirement from scooping because I knew this was going to happen. And I've always said this, especially when Avengers Endgame uh, was out. I said the only film that will break $2 billion mark is if you have Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and Tom Holland in a fucking live action Spider-Verse film, which is exactly as to what the fuck this was. It's like a fan's fucking web dream. You walk out of that theater and you go, did I really just fucking watch this? Did this really fucking happen? Did we really get all three, not just the villains, but all three fucking Spider-Mans together in one fucking film? It's just unbelievable. You just leave like thinking, wow, did I just witness this shit? And I mean, the way they all work together was just absolutely beautiful. This was the perfect way to pass the torch to Tom Holland's version of Spider-Man. And what happens at the end where he fully goes through with, you know, like, everybody really has to just forget. This is the only way to stop this shit because, like, all these fucking villains are, like, going to start to come in from, you know, every universe. And he made the decision to have everybody forget that he's Spider-Man. And it was heartbreaking because, look, obviously, uh, one other thing that I want to mention is that <clears throat> I remember reporting a long time ago that Zendaya was going to be a version of Mary Jean Watson. Everybody's been fighting with me about this for a long time, even after Far From Home acknowledges that, you know, obviously she is, an, uh, I would say, a reimagining of the uh, Mary Jean Watson character. Guess what? Now they really hit the nail in the head with verifying it because we find out that her name is Michelle Jones Watson. So there you have it. And I've been saying this for a long time now, and people actually fought with me on this one. So, and they also, you know, I, I love how they kind of talked about, like, what was going on in their lives. Andrew's uh, version of Peter Parker and Tobey Maguire's version of Peter Parker. <clears throat> Obviously, you know, uh, Toby's version of Peter Parker is having some issues with MJ, but they worked it out. I thought that maybe they were going to say something about, you know, like, um... Andrew's version moving on with Shanley Willie's version of MJ or whatever, but 
obviously they didn't really touch that and oh my god <clears throat> that one scene <coughs> sorry that one scene that everybody fucking called and everybody was wanting to happen because they wanted Andrew Garfield Spider-Man to have some kind of redemption is when Michelle Jones is falling and let me tell you it broke my heart to see Andrew's face I mean he actually ended up catching her and saving her which is actually a big rumor and it was a rumor that actually did happen and that scene was absolutely beautiful a lot of fucking fans complained well no it should be Tom Holland who saves her not fucking Andrew Garfield's version but you don't understand, this is redemption that was needed, and just the way that he reacted after he actually managed to save her, I cried. <clears throat> because I totally felt for, you know, Andrew Garfield's version of Spider-Man, when he couldn't save Gwen, the love of his life. And you know, I, everything about this movie was absolutely fucking perfect, I wouldn't have it any other way. I don't see how they could surpass this film. Because this is something like, you know, when something happens for the very first time, it's kind of hard to surpass it. And, you know, I know that Tom Holland is contracted for five more films. Here's the freebie. Two films is going to be pretty much, like, separate. I'm going to talk about that for my fan supporters only. Sorry, I got to give it to them for that one. <clears throat> and, um three other Marvel films, so he's not done. Five more contracts. So, pretty much, like, <clears throat> three more Spider-Man films, and then two more, like, you know, uh, other films. That, you know what? You could call it, like, a continuation of the Spider-Verse situation, where they're gonna fight a villain named Null. He's gonna be the main villain. I'm going to talk more about that for my fan supporters. Here we go. Lights out again. Got to pay the rent. There we go. Rent is paid. So, there's a lot of plans left. Um, and obviously, the the funny scene with uh, Venom where he pretty much goes back to his own world. And then there's a symbiote left behind, which obviously we're going to see. I mean, what I loved also is at the end of the film when Tom Holland pretty much creates his own costume. And he's pretty much on his own. Like, nobody knows that he's Spider-Man. And just having to deal with that, especially with the loss of Aunt May and just remembering everything that happened, and everybody else just forgetting that he's Peter Parker, well, Peter Parker Spider-Man, you know, it's heartbreaking. And one of the things that uh, Tom Mugar was interested in is that he wants to keep playing Spider-Man. He had so much fun. At first, he was like, okay, no problem, you know, my character comes in, Pass the torch, I make the sacrifice, and then we'll make room for Miles Morales version of Spider-Man, which is supposed to be coming from his universe. But ultimately, when it came down to it, he was just like, you know what? I love this. This is so much fun. He really just wanted to stay. <clears throat> Same thing with Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. Let me tell you something. Every one of them had so much fun. You know, and uh, I know that Sony's definitely interested in, in having more films with them as to whether or not they're going to cameo and like pretty much the same. They, I don't think they're going to have their own films. I think that maybe they'll just cameo and like maybe show up in those two other films. Not the uh, three Spider-Man films um, that Tom Holland wants to be contracted for, but two other films <clears throat> that's very similar to, <coughs> sorry, so hard to breathe in his damn mask. It's making me cough. Um... But yeah, there's going to be like two other films. Think of it this way. Um, you had three Spider-Man films. And then you had maybe two other films that he was in that's not connected with the Sony Pictures films. But it's pretty much like a Marvel Studios crossover. You know, that kind of thing. That That's pretty much what they have planned. I'm going to talk more about it with my fan supporters. But as of right now, I'm just giving you guys as a freebie with this one. But trust me, it's, it's not over. It's not done. The partnership between Marvel Studios and Sony Pictures is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, they kind of butted heads, especially with the whole trailer thing, as I explained. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think that it was wise to have Kevin Feige have the fans experience just finding out for themselves whether or not Toby and Andrew were actually in this film? Or are you siding with Amy Pascal where, you know, it's like, well, with all the leaks that are going on and all the speculations and rumors, we, we're not going to be surprised if they show up. So might as well just put them in the trailer. That way, people who are just not convinced that they're in the film... We'll be like, oh shit, they're in a the movie, we gotta go see this shit now, you know what I'm saying? Now word of mouth is spreading, but unfortunately, it, it's, it's considered to be spoilers. However, 
I think this shit would have been more crazy to find tickets if, you know, that first trailer would have showed Toby and Andrew in it. I'm telling you that right now. Because it was a nightmare trying to get tickets. I was in there for like four hours trying to get tickets and everything. And it was just absolutely insane. But now that the word is going to be out, <clears throat> especially thanks to those who are spoiling everything on fucking YouTube and Twitter, assholes. Um, yeah, I think this, this, let me tell you something, okay? If it wasn't for the pandemic, this film would have obviously beaten, um, Avengers Endgame at the box office. But with no China release, it ain't gonna fucking happen. We need China. It could, it could reach, I mean, if anything, it'll reach the one billion dollar mark, but two billion, it ain't gonna fucking happen. <clears throat> you gotta consider the pandemic, and you gotta consider the fact that you know there's no China release. You know? So, I mean, I think that just pretty much covers just about everything. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this review. I mean, look, it's been a very long journey. It's been a very long time. I only came back out of retirement to give you guys this exclusive stuff. And I'm going to keep doing the fan support stuff, but that's all I can give. And I'm going to explain later as to what I plan on doing um, for the fan supporters and stuff. Because I have certain assholes, one particular asshole who goes on my fan support page and steals my shit. Post it and then, you know, uh, claims all the fucking glory for it and gives me no credit for it. And uh, I'm tired of that shit. It, it's really starting to bug me a lot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's like, I just really want to thank all of you who've been supporting me for, geez, I can't believe it's been almost more than 16 years now of doing this. And it's very, I'm telling you, this film and just everything, my whole journey and the whole experience I've had with you guys, it, it's really just very emotional for me, you know what I'm saying, like, and I'm telling you, as a Spider-Man fan, uh, I know, that, oh, there we go, lights out again, time to pay the rent, where's the nickel, <laughs> there we go, Mr. Dickovich, I paid the fucking rent, because you fixed the damn door, anyway, um, well, like I said, it's been a very, very long journey, and I really want to thank all of you who supported me for so many years, yeah, granted, you know what? I ain't really out there. People are not fully aware of who I am. But you know what? It works out for me because I'm an actor who's been in the Spider-Man films, and here I am, like, you know, doing this shit. And it's like, the less exposure, the better. But for those of you who know me, for those of you who, you know, have always acknowledged me, giving me credit and stuff, thank you so very much. Um, especially the fan supporters who've been... Pretty much your donations to St. Children's Children's Hospital has just been absolutely webtastic and... You know, I used to have childhood leukemia, so I, I know what it's like for parents and for kids to just be scared shitless, and, you know, everything goes to them, and uh, I'm very proud of it, so thank you so much. You guys are contributing to saving lives. I really do appreciate that. And, uh, damn, I can't... It's been such a long journey, and that's all I have to give. So basically, yeah, I'm going back into retirement. I mean... <sighs> For my fan supporters, maybe here and there, I will um, mix a little bullshit with facts, and you just kind of have to figure it out like Easter eggs as to what is what. I mean, I don't know yet. It's just, I. it's very frustrating for me when I report on something and fucking Daniel RP fucking K steals my information because I have a rat fuck on my fan support page. So, anyway, yeah, this is... <laughs> I think it's a pretty long video. I can't even tell on my screen how long this video's been going for, but I just seriously wanted to say thank you to everybody, and um, I hope you have a lot of fun with this film. And honestly, like, I never... When I heard that they were planning on doing this, I'm like, I'm so fucking in. I'm not gonna retire fully. I gotta get back in the fucking scoop business. And unfortunately, for me to be able to read the script, and I, <laughs> I'm like, yo... Read the script, all right. Sign an NDA and not say shit. Ah, uh, fuck me. And I'm telling you, it was so hard sometimes because a lot of you were like pointing out all these fucking leaks and shit. And they're like, is this true? Is this, is this really happening? Is, are those leaks real? And I'm just sitting there like, I wish I could say something, but I can't say fucking shit. <laughs> and it's just so fucking exhausting. It's been so fucking long. And finally, now everything's out. And basically, every leak that was out there was like 100% true. Every fucking leak. This was the worst kept fucking secret 
for this film. And that's pretty much one of the main reasons to why Sony Pictures and Marvel Studios have been really pissed off because I don't know any other film that has had so many leaks like, like this. It's just absolutely ridiculous. But I'm glad it's out and I'm glad, I, I hope all of you enjoy the film, you know, because if you really don't, honestly, I, I'm going to speak from the heart here, okay? You guys know how I feel about EMC version of, of, of Tom Holland's Spider-Man and all that shit and John Watts. But if you walk out of this film and are not convinced that this is one of the best Spider-Man films ever fucking made, then I think you're just holding a personal grudge about, you know, the direction that Marvel Studios Spider-Man is going. And I'm telling you, they're really, by the end of the film, you could tell that they're trying to do their own thing. And, you know, you have to understand that Sony Pictures owns the rights to these characters. So, of course, Marvel Studios is left with no... They were left with no option but to improvise with these characters, you know what I'm saying? Like, all the hybrid mixed characters and stuff. And it fully paid off. It really well. I just can't wait to see what they do with this character. And I think that the way the send-off of Tom Holland's Spider-Man was absolutely perfect. It's really fucking heartbreaking to just have everyone around you just forget all the good memories, all the good times, and who you are. Especially, like, when you love somebody. And you just gotta... You gotta move on. You gotta forget. And I think in some ways, at the end of the film, when he saw how, you know, um... Michelle Jones and how uh, Ned Leeds are pretty much like doing really great on their own. It's like he kind of wanted to be involved, but at the same time, he remembers what happens when, you know, when everybody found out he was Spider Man and they were close to him and they couldn't get into MIT and all this other shit. It's kind of like he's backing away and just kind of like do his own. There we go. Not paying rent again, huh? <laughs> I swear, I am almost finished here. All right, so I'm going to finish this right now. I just gotta say thank you to everybody here. I know I'm ranting and going on and on, but this is like a literally a, a review. <laughs> and, you know, I thought it'd be pretty cool to do with this mask on, with the lights on and everything. It's pretty cool. I mean, I gotta check out the video afterwards to see how it looks. I hope there's not like lights everywhere and going back, getting in the way. But, um, have fun with this film. Thank you everyone for supporting me for all these years, and that's just pretty much it. So until next time, Spidey Webbing out. Check this out. Hey, watch this. Hi there. Hey, watch this. This has been one hell of a journey since I did the review of the first script revision for Spider-Man No Way Home from last Christmas back in 2020. And I was really excited because I heard a lot of rumors, especially from what my old sources have given me 100% accurate information from the past Spider-Man films told me that Sony Pictures is working on a live action Spider-Verse uh, film of all three actors. And uh, this was all pre-COVID, so it's been in the works for a very long time now. And that there was a possibility that they might have Spider-Man 3 stand on its own and teasing the live action Spider-Verse film from Sony Pictures and not as collaboration with Marvel Studios so that they could fully profit from the ticket sales, which makes perfect sense. Being that Sony Pictures sold the movie merchandising rights over to Disney and Marvel, and they're the ones, you know, who make the majority of the profits, and that's where the real money's being made and not at the box office. Especially when it comes to the number one top selling comic character, Spider-Man, outranking all the other superheroes in retail sales. The question of the day is, if Spider-Man No Way Home is actually that live action Spider-Verse film, is a Spider-Verse character making an ultimate sacrifice and another character can finally emerge onto the big screen? Or will this character survive to be another Marvel Studios film that's all connected? Was a certain director who was approached to direct a Spider-Man film actually for Spider-Man No Way Home? Or the Sony Pictures live-action Spider-Verse film and declined because it was just too much for this person? The answers to these questions will all be revealed opening day. 
And I'm also so excited to share uh, with my fan supporters my review of the Dirk Skirt Revision for Spider-Man No Way Home. Because the previous two had me a little worried. And the question is, did the script improve or did it get worse? On another note, I did announce a few days ago that after the release of Spider-Man No Way Home, that I will finally officially retire. And uh, I know a couple years ago I said the same thing, but then when I found out that this was going on, I'm like, yo, <laughs> I gotta come back for this one. Don't panic though. I will still continue to make videos. It's not the end. I just won't be doing any more inside information on these Spider-Man films. Well, I might hint at stuff for fan supporters only. I'm gonna have to think about that. I'm not sure yet. And look, guys, it's been 14 years. And my scooping experience has been just like toilet paper. Where I've been constantly on a roll, but always getting shitted on by hateful, disrespectful trolls. And look, even at 1.7, Webhead's retired. And sometimes it's just time to move on. And that's exactly as to what I'm going to try to do. And look, if you want to trust anyone of Scoops, I would highly suggest Andy Signor. Yes, Daniel RPK is good too, but the issue is, is that he steals information from other Scoopers and never credits them and gets away with it all the time. And I don't condone or respect that method at all. The smart thing is that he never responds to any fraudulent accusations, which is smart because then no one will ever find out about it. If he doesn't interact with them, no one's going to know. I mean, look, he went as far as leading every tweet associated with Dylan O'Brien rumors. Yet everyone from that time remembers that there was only three people involved in that situation. Okay, it was myself, Reddit Leaker, and Daniel RPK. And once again, I don't condone that type of, you know, behavior. Um... Because, look, we all have our bad days with the scooping business, and information, you know, gets wrong. It happens all the time. But if you're right about something, that credit should be given to those who scoop it first. But that never happens, and people get screwed over um, constantly. It's happened to Andy Signore, um, and it's happened to me quite a few times, you know, over the years. And, look, it sucks. And these people are vultures, and it just sickens me. It, it, it's a very, you know... Very sick game they're playing. <laughs> and uh, also, a fantastic thanks to those on my fan support page, um, especially to each and every one of you that are on there. And look, you guys are true superheroes because the donations go to St. Jude's Children's Hospital, and you're helping to save a child's life. And that means the world to me. And that's one of the main reasons why I started doing this. And so I just want to say thank you and God bless to each and every one of you on there. And look, I completely understand if you can't afford to do so. I don't think any less of any of you. Because we all have our own financial issues. And uh, it's just very vital to you know help support those who work really hard to edit these videos. Which is very time consuming. Sometimes it takes me about 3-4 to four hours to do these videos. You know. And uh, I have no issues with those who you know decide. Whatever decisions they decide to make of what they receive. Um, you know to make a, a living or get new equipment. That, that's perfectly fine. You know. You work hard at something. You deserve to get money to improve or you know whatever. And, uh, look, I just chose to do this because I love kids. And as a childhood leukemia survivor, I believe that every child deserves a second chance at life. And it's also a deal I worked out with my sources to keep things quiet and not perfect, which worked out perfectly because a couple of years ago, I completely retired. I was done for good. And that's how I worked things out. And uh, that's one of the main reasons to why I, I know... To me, sometimes it's like, well, I wish I had a bigger following so I could get more people out there to, you know, know this information. But at the same time, it's a blessing because, you know what, I'm not putting myself in a position to where I can get in real big trouble. So, it worked out perfectly. And, again, years ago, I did retire, but when I heard about what was coming, I, I just had to come back this time, you know. And uh, I've always stated that the only Spider-Man film that would be at the Avengers level and bank at the box office is a live action Spider-Verse film featuring Tom McGuire, Andrew Garfield, and Tom Holland. And I truly believe that this is the only film that would even break the Avengers Endgame record. But, you know, right now with the pandemic and everything, I'm not sure if it's going to happen. But I'm pretty sure it'll probably at least reach the $1 billion mark. I wouldn't be surprised if it surpasses $2 billion, But, you know, the way with the pandemic and everything going on right now, I don't... It's probably not going to reach a billion realistically. But still, it's it's... If it wasn't for the pandemic, it would definitely be the Avengers Endgame record. I mean, it already surpassed it in views, you know, and this is like a really big movie. And Spider-Man is like a number one comic character, so there you go. 
And I also signed an NDA at one point, and that's where things became complicated because, you know, I can no longer confirm or deny if Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield will be in this upcoming film. I can, however, do a review of scripts without talking about any spoilers, but judging on the writing, dialogue, action scenes, and etc. I will also include at the end of the video a theory of what's been going around, which is something you don't want to miss out on, trust me, along with a story on how, you know, and why Kevin Feige and Pascal, along with Tom Rothman, came up with the decision on making a live-action Spider-Verse film. And obviously from what we saw in the trailer, and the characters that will be in this film, there was a major change in tone on which direction they were going uh, with this film. Sort of like how uh, originally Captain America 3 was going to be on its own, and Cap was going to be fighting a doppelganger. And then it turned out to be a live-action version of Civil War, featuring multiple uh, Avengers characters. So, it's the same thing here with this film. And look, Tom Holland is telling the truth that you all don't know what's coming. And that what you think you saw in the teaser trailer was just the very tip of the iceberg. He's 100% correct on that one. You just are not all ready for what will be happening in this film. And I 100% guarantee that. And now before I go into the review of the third script of Vision, I will leave all of this statement and pay very close attention. That yes, the animated Spider-Verse film okay, was a love story to Spider-Man. While Spider-Man No Way Home will be reunite and be a love story to all Spider-Man fans. That is all. And if you want to watch the rest of this video, which I highly recommend, this is the one video where it's really just one of the best ones. And you don't want to miss out on this one. I'm just telling you, you know, you can just join the fan support to watch, and you know, you can cancel the description anytime. You don't have to keep going at it, you know what I'm saying? You can just do it once, watch the video, and not, that's it. Plus, there are a total of 57 other videos on there that you could find in the fan support videos playlist, and you got a whole month once you, you know, do it once, and, and that's it. So, alright, this is it. You guys ready for it? Okay, well, here we go. So let's go back to the beginning on how this all started out between Kevin Feige, Amy Pascal, and Tom Rothman. The question was, how do we top the last film? In fact, how do we make one of the greatest Spider-Man films of all time and surpass the originals? Being that, that was pretty much close to Tom Holland's last hurrah as Spider-Man and the Spider-Man collaboration between Marvel Studios and Sony Pictures. How do we unite the fan base who's already split? Because already Sony Pictures had in their mind that they're taking Spider-Man home. So you have Tom McGuire, Andrew Garfield, and Tom Holland fans. How do we get them all to reunite and when, you know, watch this third film? Because Sony is aware that there are fans out there who refer to Tom Holland's Spider-Man as Iron Boy Jr. On top of all the other complaints. A lot of fans are just not accepting him as, as the new version of Spider-Man. So how do we do this? How about we just take two other actors who previously played Spider-Man and help him, you know, pass the torch. Keep in mind that Sony Pictures have been wanting to use the Sinister Six as villains for a very, very long time. And they were really this close to doing a spin-off film. So, how do we pull this off of in a two-hour movie and introducing all these villains? Kevin Feige comes in and says, it's simple, we don't. We are working on a multiverse theme for Phase 4, so why not get all three previous Spider-Man actors and use prior well-established villains from the Raimi and Webb films? Mic drop. Mind you, this was during a time to where we heard the news that Sony Pictures is pulling Spider-Man out from the MCU. Okay? And the fans just wouldn't take it. They're like, no, 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 no. We want Tom Holland in the MCU. We want more, you know, MCU Spider-Man films. We don't want him going his separate ways or just having another Spider-Man. No, we want this to continue. So thanks to all the fans, they were able to work things out. And one of the things that was stopping them was, okay, this is a great idea, but how do we do this legally? Because, <laughs> you know, Sony Pictures owns the characters and, you know, Marvel Studios owns the, owns the MCU characters. How are we going to pull this shit off? They work something out. I can't go into details about it. And look, you're all going to be surprised with what they had planned between the MCU and Sony's universe of Marvel characters, which just got rebranded as Sony Spider-Man Universe. Once again, the tip of the iceberg. 
and you all have no idea on what's coming. And I cannot wait to see everyone's reaction. And of course, not everyone's going to be happy about it, but I think the majority will be very satisfied, and that's all that matters. You honestly just can't please everyone. There's going to be someone complaining. And yes, the plan was pre-COVID. And, you know, the plan was that in order to introduce Miles Morales and warning, major spoiler alert. So if you don't want to know, please leave now. Okay, you ready? Obviously, this has been revealed before if you're a fan supporter. Tom McGuire's Spider-Man will make the ultimate sacrifice and Miles Morales will be from that same universe. And that there was even talks at one point for them to have Mayday Parker to do the same. And Amy Pascal was in love with that idea. Yes, the daughter of Tom McGuire and Kirsten Dunst, Peter Parker, and Mary Jane Watson. Yet, according to Daniel RPK, it's a boy that they have and not a girl. Okay. Maybe they'll still include that character in having Miles Morales be the main Spider-Man at Sony Pictures, while Marvel Studios will continue to have Tom Holland playing as Spider-Man, you know, for their films. And uh, yes, Tom Holland's not done playing Spider-Man. Although he's contracted for maybe one more film, I think. Not another Spider-Man film, but just another appearance in the MCU film. Maybe we'll see him next in Doctor Strange 2. Can't say nothing. That Sam Raimi was approached to direct a Spider-Man film, and that if it becomes too much for him that he can co-direct with John Watts. I reported that a while ago. And here's the thing. Kevin Feige and Sam Raimi had one hell of a time with Doctor Strange 2, and loves the experience working with Marvel Studios, so this won't be the last time he'll direct an MCU film. I guarantee that. Sony Pictures is a whole different ballgame, because they didn't exactly end on good terms, but... He is just so passionate about Spider-Man, and so far everyone in Marvel Studios Sony Pictures are actually collaborating really well with each other. So who knows? Maybe they'll just kiss and make up and, you know. So could it be that Sam Raimi uh, was approached to direct a Spider-Man No Way Home film or the live-action Spider-Verse film, which, you know, like I said, was definitely talked about, especially the two different options for a main villain which I've already, you can watch my previous videos, and I confirm as to what villains they're thinking of. Along with an anti-hero who's going to be helping the Spider-Verse characters. And, uh, look, I couldn't see that Spider-Man live-action Spider-Verse film happening anytime soon. And uh, most likely you'll see Venom, Carnage, and Spider-Man interact with each other in a film prior to that Spider-Verse uh, Avengers Endgame level type of film, because Spider-Man No Way Home... I would compare it to Avengers Infinity War, which is only the beginning, and not a one-time deal. Regardless, you could bet your ass the same Raimi consulted on Spider-Man No Way Home. Courtesy of Kevin Feige, yet John Watts didn't need it because he's an ungrateful piece of shit. And when you watch this film, and like I said, there's a whole difference between reading what you read on uh, paper and then wh what they do on film. You will not be convinced that this is a John Watts film. It's not going to feel like it, because it's completely set in a different tone compared to the last two MCU Spider-Man films. Some aspects of it will definitely be John Watts, but the majority of it will very much feel like a Sam Raimi film. Not that Sam had any directing in this, that, that, this is not his project, it's, it's John Watts. Sam has got Doctor Strange 2, and John has, you know, Spider-Man 3. And Kevin Feige definitely lit a fire in John Watts' ass. Because there's a lot of complaints over the last two films about, you know, how they're not doing certain things with the character and just, hey, let's just have fun with Spider-Man and screw everything else. Especially the writers. Uh, and Tom Rothman was on them, and so was Amy Pascal, because they want the fans to continue to support and watch the other Sony Pictures Spider-Man films so that they could actually really profit from it from ticket sales. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about those theories in which I will add some facts and fiction. Okay, so it's kind of like hide and seek here or you know find out what the truth is and find out what the bullshit is so people are assuming that dr strange isn't who he is from what they've seen in the trailers especially you know seeing him wearing the eye of akamoto rumors are that it's either mysterio or memphisto surprisingly which would make perfect sense considering the fact the storyline is based on one more date where ant may get shot and is dying and uh, peter has no choice but to make a deal with memphisto to save her life in exchange for Peter and Mary Jane's marriage. Also, the storyline on how Peter asked Doctor Strange to make the world forget that he's Spider-Man is definitely from that storyline. Granted, yes, it's possible, and they don't always follow the storyline from the comics. I mean, in the comics, Peter willingly reveals to the world that he's Spider-Man, which was what they originally were going to do in the Civil War film by teasing and having Peter come out in the Iron Spider costume and say he's Spider-Man. 
but they went a completely different direction by having Mysterio reveal to the world that he's Spider-Man. So there you go, same concept, different, you know, uh, path. Is there a sixth villain? Maybe. Perhaps that mysterious villain will be revealed later on in the film. It'd actually be kind of hilarious it was revealed to be Bruce Campbell's Mysterio from the Raimi-verse who tries to audition as a sixth member, but then the real Mysterio from the MCU shows up and kills him off. Regardless of what happens, Mysterio's presence will definitely be felt in this film. That's all I can say about that. Are any characters going to die in this film? Perhaps, and all I'm going to say is that multiple scenes were shot to prevent any leaks. Doesn't necessarily have to do with a death scene, and the rumors are that Aunt May dies, or that Betty Brank dies, which makes Ned angry enough to actually become the Hobgoblin, and blames Peter for it. And also my personal favorite, and I swear to God that if this actually does happen on film, I'm not confirming or denying it, that Zendaya's character Michelle Jones tries to pull a Kirsten Dunst MJ move from the scene in Spider-Man 2, where she tries to knock out Doc Ock, yet this time it's one of the Green Goblin that hits her so hard that she slams her into the wall and dies from the impact, just like when Stacey did in Amazing Spider-Man 2. And we actually see Tom Holland's Spider-Man go apes on the Goblin out of anger. Listen... I will get up and clap if I see Zendaya's character die on screen. Because I cannot stand her character. You guys all know that. Yet the outcome is, is that by the end of the film, Peter messes with things again. And it turns out that Michelle Jones doesn't even recognize who Peter is. And, you know, Ned makes a comment about how she's too good for us to even chat with. And completely doing a 360 on her personality and character as a popular girl in school. Pretty much making her more like a classic MJ. Okay. So like I said, fact... Or fiction, we don't know. <laughs> it's a possibility and maybe bullshit. Speaking of Michelle Jones, her relationship with Peter Parker will definitely be tested in this film, especially when shit hits, you know, starts to hit the fan. And also, will the devil of Hell's Kitchen actually be in this movie? Well, there will be a lawyer or legal representation in this film, and that's all I'm going to say. The true answer to that question will shock you. So, let's go over that third script revision. Did it improve or did it get worse? Good news, it definitely improved, by far. The dialogue, story, characters, villains, action scenes, well, definitely, guess, guess what? Okay, this is coming from, listen, look, I'm a huge Sam Raimi Spider-Man 2 fan. The action scenes in this film, I believe, will definitely top Sam Raimi Spider-Man 2 train scene. Shocker, right? Because the last two films' action scenes were meh. And they spared no expense of the intensity of the action scenes that will make your spider sense go crazy with Poseidon. And I'm telling you, I'm just reading this stuff and I'm just like, yeah, goodbye Sam Raimi Spider-Man 2 as far as the action scene is concerned because this, this sounds insane. And as far as the inspirational messages that relates to, you know, everyone that are just as powerful as Aunt May's, uh, there's a here, here in all of a speech. I would say it's an improved work in progress, but not so much, but there will be some webtastic moments out of it. I don't want to spoil anything. Okay, so are the characters in the script equally balanced, being that so many characters will be in this film? Yes and no. I would say they, you know, do a pretty decent job of it, especially since a lot of these characters are very well established, but it could be the longest Spider-Man film yet, in my personal opinion. I really cannot tell. And I know that there's so many comments being made about how Doc Ock's redemption story will now be ruined and they're pissed off and bitching about it. But look, if you noticed in the trailer, his tentacles are red, meaning that the AI is still in control, which means the villains are snapped before they die. Not when they die, not after they die, before they die. Okay? And that's, watching the trailer, you can so tell. You know? Also, with what, you know, director John wants to offer Molina is that, you know, the scene take pl takes place during the rubber scene. So, obviously, it'll happen before, you know, he dies. Also, let's say that, you know, for example, they have accomplished their mission successfully. That the villains get sent back in time with no memory of what happened. And back to their timeline of where they originally left off as if, you know, nothing ever happened to begin with. You never know. You know, I, I can't. I'm just talking here. Now, here's the mother of all questions that everyone wants answered. Will this be the best Spider-Man film ever made? If you ask me that question prior to the past two script revisions, I would say possibly. But get this. 
after reading the third script revision, you're damn right this film is going to turn out to be the best Spider-Man film ever made. Fueled by nostalgia, just like the Cobra Kai TV show did for The Karate Kid. Where not only is there so much nostalgia that it will reunite all Spider-Man fans, but very good storytelling, for the exception of some really dumb things like Peter worrying about Aunt May, Ned and Michelle Jones forgetting about him being Spider-Man. <laughs> when truth be told, he just tell them all over again. You know, which is the dumbest plot holes and lazy writing ever made. That was really dumb in the trailer. And, uh, you know, uh, will some fans be very disappointed by some of the things that will happen in this film? Or lower their expectations and complain about it? Oh, yes, by far. That will definitely happen. But overall, I feel that majority of the Spider-Man fans will really love and cherish this film. And it's way better than Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3 by a landslide. And I wouldn't be surprised if people stated that it is the worst Spider-Man you know, it, this film is worse than Spider-Man 3. But it's going to be coming from the haters. You know, there's still going to be haters out there. There's still going to be the Iron Boy Jr. horse shit. Um, yeah, obviously, one of the things that I dislike about it is that Peter is still, even at the third film, he's still stupid. Doesn't know what he's doing, and he's <laughs> hasn't learned yet. You know what I'm saying? And, um, well, that that's just pretty much it. That's all I have to say. Okay, so why are you guys still here? It's over. I have nothing else to say, nothing else to get. Okay, okay, you guys want to know? Yeah, that, that, that question. Okay, well, you know, tough shit, I signed an NDA. So until next time, on the same Sparta time, same Sparta channel, and same Sparta place, Spidey Women out. What are you still doing here? I got nothing else to say. It's over. Go to bed. Time out. Good night. Thanks, Tiger. You just hit the jackpot. Woo!